Hello all. Well, this is the one I've been after. I've pestered him, I've texted him, and I've finally got him. This is, come here Ted, Mr. Ted Davis. For those that don't know him, this is Ted. Ted, you're a farmer from Prestine. I am. You have the U-Turn podcast. Yep. Which is going very well with Ben and Nog. Ben and Nog. Yep, to please say hello to them from me. I will do. Also, big into the y YFC. Yeah. A family man. What else are we going to talk about, Ted? Come on, mate, let's well, go. There's, there's a lot to talk about. Yes. Yeah. Let's start, right, Ted? You might not believe this. I might not have told you. But I'm going to tell you about this now. My grandfather, Christopher John, was a farmer. Right. In Kevin. All right. And my first experiences of farming was. I actually thought he was a cowboy, right? And I tell you why, because he, he had his Welsh cob, and that's how I used to go around and see his flock. Yeah, yeah. Now, unfortunately, there was a tragedy. Um, my grandfather got, he was killed by a tractor, right? And that changed my course. But yeah. that's my, my first impact of farming, and it stayed with me forever. This is why most of my friends are farmers, eh? Yeah, yeah. What, what was yours, Ted? Where did it, what, with farming? Um, this has always been there, really. Like, ever since, ever since whenever. Like, yeah. I've always been on the farm, out with Dad. I remember very vague memories of my granddad, but he died when I was four. Yeah. So it must have been, I must have been young when it was happening, but my older sister and brother would go to school, and my granddad, Gaga we called him, he'd swing by in the land That's what I say, Gaga, I like it. <laughs> That's what my dad's called now for my son. Well. All right, yeah. The same Land Rover that I put on Facebook the other day. He'd swing by in that, <laughs> and he'd take me around the sheep with him just to give mum an hour or so child-free time. Yeah. And that's probably one of the earliest memories I can recall is just being out on a bike, sat on the mud guard of a tractor somewhere, or you know, on the back of a quad bike piled up. There's always hundreds of kids about at home. Nan's got. 11 or 12 grandkids, I think it is. And we're all pretty close to Hill Farm and Prestine, so, yeah. So it's early doors, you fell in love with your profession, yeah? Oh, yeah, 100%. Never wanted to do anything else, really. Um, Mum and Dad, they didn't always want me to do something else, but, you know, it's, yeah. it's a difficult job farming. I'm, yeah. not, well, I'm not here to play well, I know that, Ted. I don't know. But... You know, they've always said, look, you can go and do other things and earn better money and do whatever, but never, never even questioned it, really. Always, always, always wanted to do what Dad does, really, and what Granddad did. So your family farm is out in Prestine, then, Ted, yeah? Is out in Prestine, yeah. We overlook Prestine. Um, yeah. County Radnorshire. Place of my birth, Bill, mate. God's country. God's country, Big Ted. <laughs> that was fun. So, with that, no, I'm... I'm big on working with young people in the community and, in other words, sometimes empowering them along. Yeah. You've also got the connections with young farmers clubs. Radnor Young Farmers. Yeah. With the Prestine Young Farmers. That's right. Now, I've seen you on stage, Ted. Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, we do. <laughs> young farmers, right? How much has that played in your life as well? That, young farmers is a massive part yeah. of, well, anyone who's been in young farmers, it's a massive part of their life. You don't even realise how much it is enriching your life, teaching you different skills. Like, I'm pretty confident I can get up in a room and stand in front of... Well, I know you can, Ted. ...however many people <laughs> and dance around in a dress and everything <laughs> yeah. else like that. Well, I've seen that. You've seen yeah, that. I've seen that, Ted. We won't go well, there like now. That's, <laughs> that's what Young Farmers does. It, it gives people the opportunity to do things that are pretty foreign to them at the time. Like, I think I did my first public speaking competition like 12 or 13 and it was so foreign to me yeah. I just hate reading out loud in class or whatever but then um, once you know you know it sounds dull but once somebody tells you how to stand up and speak in front of people you're there well, you know you've yeah. got it for life so. and the thing I love about Jim Farmer said is what I call the peer education of it yeah not only of someone directing you you've seen your friend do it oh yeah 100% and if, and before you know it you've copied that skill yeah and you've developed it. And, and it allows you to meet so many different people 
your age, like, you've got a lot of friends in school. Yeah. But then you meet people, might be a little bit older, a little bit younger than you, from all over the county of Radnorshire. I've got some of my best mates. Yeah. Are from, well, 10, 15 miles from Prestine. And the podcast, there's, are your mates from, that is that built from the YFC? That, that came from Young Farmers, yeah. Um, Nog was in Young Farmers before me, he's a couple of years older. Yeah. And then I sort of, I took Ben, who's uh, he's the king of our podcast. He's in charge of it all. Yeah. But I didn't like to say anything, but I've oh, never no, met the is. other two, but. Ben's in charge of it all, but Ben, I sort of, I took. Ben will admit this as well. I sort of took Ben under my wing a bit. He turned up at Young Farmers when he was like 11 or 12. He's only about that big. Yeah. I think here. I've heard this on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think it's an amazing thing in farmers because you get young people interacting and learning from the older people. Yeah. Learning so many different things, just life skills in general. Like, I'm not just talking about flower ranging and. But here's the thing, see, Ted, right? My observation on it. The, the competitions you do, and you know I love getting involved with all the entertainment stuff, yeah. are wonderful. But my observation is, is what we're talking about now is the skills that you've got. That's got to be praised up the process sometimes. Oh, definitely. To flag young farmers, the numbers may be falling. That process is a hundred times better than any competition. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've just been talking... For the, for, the, for the people I met with YFC, yeah. you know? We've just been talking about it now this morning. The, the field day for young farmers is happening just over at Penliney. I just got yeah. from there now. We've been doing a podcast, haven't you? We've been doing a podcast there. Can't wait to and, see it. Um, see it, hear it. <laughs> you see this one, Ted? We'll see, yes. Yeah. 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 No, we don't go on camera on hours. Um, we've just been talking about it now. Like, like you say, the competitions are amazing and it's good to have Oh, fun. they are. Don't get me wrong, they are. But what you learn from going to meetings, meeting up with different like-minded people, is it pays dividends. Like, you just... So many life skills can be learned through young farmers and i'm not saying young farmers is the be all and end all oh, there are for, other youth organizers that do a brilliant job as well are. but for rural isolated communities like myself in radnorshire and brecknorshire and all farmer communities like there's nothing else but young farmers and i think it's, a, it's, it's, sort of, it's one of the job. they do and before you i bother pause you i'm going to give someone a shout out darren evans Chair of Bill Files YFC. Yeah. He's my producer. Right. He has to put up with my shit. <laughs> yeah. So he's got a big job on he's his hands. He's got a bit of a job on his hands. Imagine we just wrap it up on young farmers there. What if you come back to the U Turn podcast, Ted? And I did I did get a bit wrong when I was starting. And I'm gonna tell you something all now, right? I'm not gonna give anything away because it's a podcast. And these guys want you to listen to it. But there was the funniest episode. And they did get pressing and lighting mixed up. Yeah, don't do that. Don't there's, get them. there's a bit of poop involved and people pooing in the wrong place. But all I'm going to say is classic comedy. Well, I don't know what episode it is, but if you go I think on... It was episode 9 or 10. Yeah, go on to Spotify. I tell you what, I'm going to put the link up. How's that? That's this. Cheers. So, coming back now, Ted, to the U-Turn podcast. Yeah. There was one pod you did, and I remember I left a message for you. It touched me. And you had that um, the charity, the DPJ Foundation, DPJ Foundation, and the founder of that, yeah, Emma Picton Jones. And I thought that was powerful listening. No, I like the analogy she put about the bucket on your head got to empty it out. Yeah, yeah. For if you haven't seen it, it's basically you need to listen to that episode as well. And it's just you do. That's that's. Not only listening back to it, because I have listened back to it, but even when we were recording it, we were recording thinking, Jesus Christ, this is some powerful stuff that she's going to have. Well, it I, you know, I'm quite an emotional man. It moved me. I was quite... Yeah. You, you, they were saying trigger words. Well, the, just her story in general. Yeah. Anyone, she, she yeah. Years, in fairness, but the way she's so... Oh, put about it. Yeah. yeah. And I just... As we were talking on the way up, if you're talking about... You know, and you're not bottling them in... And you're letting you empty your bucket. You've got right? to empty your bucket. Got to empty your bucket. You're on the right road because you're asking how I am. And you, you know, creativity is that's my bucket. Yeah. You know, I empty my bucket and I put a bit of creativity in it. And yeah, off I go again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'm passionate about mental health and well being. And I know you are as well, Ted. And um, yeah, definitely. Like, 
I won't name any names or but like everyone knows everyone everyone knows knows someone who's got mental health problems or suffered even if you even if they don't know you're suffering i know people that have suffered with mental health they don't even know it themselves yeah but you know i have ups and downs everybody has ups and downs and if if you say you don't well you're lying because everyone does but if you can talk about it and it doesn't even have to be a deep conversation like going into depression and if you can just say how are you and you say well no i haven't been great but you know, I'm getting about, um, i've got this hashtag hashtag 365 just ask right and i'm all for the awareness weeks ted i think they are really good yeah but as we're talking now i know uh, you'll always ask me and i'll always ask you yeah. it might be fine but the fact you do that you can ask anyone at any time yeah and to come back to the yfc the bill fire put a talking bench up uh, yeah. It seems like yeah, if you could sit on the bench, but the fact that it's in the town is getting people talking, yeah. you know. And no, that's right. But you've got to have it, it has got to be an honest conversation. Like if if you ask me how I, I'll tell you. If I'm good, I'm good. If I'm not, I'll tell you. And yeah, that's that's the first step, really. It's just just be honest. If you're not feeling great, that's how it is. Sometimes you just you know by working together with other people. You know, you'll you'll get through it. And what's your phrase? Take, Take time it. and be nice. So, Ted, we've had a, we've, we've covered a lot of stuff. And if you note, I haven't been avoiding it, but I do know because you do tend to remind people on your podcast you are the current player of the year from the Bulls, Bill Fells RFC. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't like to admit it too often. Yeah. No, I do like to admit <laughs> it. <laughs> I am well. I don't know where it starts and when it ends. It starts in 2019 yeah. to 2020, but we haven't played since no, no, then, so you're, I'm, you're I'm claiming it's you're the top dog, aren't you? Well, well it's going to be current yeah. day, isn't it? Yeah, this is the top dog. But speaking of top dogs, <laughs> there were a lot of top dogs on the on the grow. I got to uh, down there, but right? Well, about three weeks ago when, when we recorded, it is about three weeks, where you had that fantastic game, Ted. All of you, just men of the match of that day, Men of the match. There were some really good players. We we beat Brecon. We did beat Brecon on the grow in front of a crowd. Yeah. Which was an amazing day, Ted, wasn't it? Well, there's nothing better. Nothing more wanted. Yeah, and I just remember having the conversation with you about podcasts and stuff before I started dribbling and Ali told me I had to go home. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you should have told me to go home. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what a game, Ted. And I, we did touch on it. I gotta ask, what you what was it like in front of that crowd? You've seen some big crowds there, Tim, but that reminded me of the eighties, mate, when I was watching the Bulls there. Well, I tried not to take too much notice of it, to be honest, because you sort of know you've got Mike Price on Facebook giving it the big build up <laughs> for well, it felt like a month before the game. You had, you had Dugs and Mo. The, yeah, we had the big video. <laughs> you had the big video. With the jungle there on the hill. Yeah. And you try not to let it you know, it, it, I'm making it sound like it was bloody well, Ted, final. Well, Ted, let's be honest about it, right? It's grassroots rugby, right? And that, for our, for us in the town on that day, it, it was, was the, biggest, the fight. It yeah. was the biggest game around. Well, it is. For Mid Wales rugby, yeah. it doesn't get a lot bigger, really. No, and, and I know what you're saying. You can't get too carried away with it. But the moment said, that moment, the whole of both came out to support and Brecon. Well, they did, yeah. No, I, you know, there's, there's a lot bigger games, but... For young boys in their rugby career, I don't know if I count myself as a young boy anymore. I feel quite old in that team now, but yeah, that's true, Ted. <laughs> you know, it's a big moment, and to come away with a win with a group of boys that you've you, played with a lot, you've played it, with a lot, yeah, and it's, new lads um, as well. So no, it was, a, it was a very special day, in fairness, and it was only really when the game finished. Um, when you sort of stood and looked around, because there was everyone seemed to hang around the pitch. Usually, by the time the whistle's gone, most people ahead and for the car ahead of me. But everyone, talk to you. everyone was stood yeah, around. Yeah, families just, around to kid. I met you, a little little man. There. Yeah, no, everyone was just taken in the moment, really, and it was yeah, it's a wonderful day. Right, it's a stuff, Brecon. You know you're going to have now. You know, I put Duggan and I put Mo in the spot. Don't think you're going to get. What do you think is a, what's going to happen in the next game, Ted? What's going to happen? Well, it's a big ask, isn't it, to go down. You've always got the home advantage. Yeah. There is such a thing as home advantage. And we're going into their territory. Um, I've obviously got to say Bilf to win. Yes. It's a big ask. It's probably a bigger ask than than to beat him on the grow. Yeah. But I think well, the boys have been training well. Duggan's got us 
firing on all cylinders pretty got much. Bus loads coming from me and Ali. They're, bloody, they're bus busting them down there, Yes, they are coming down, mate. Right? They're busting them down, so. I don't think they'll ever let me commentate again. I'm sacked, Gethin. Gethin Lewis. Yeah, you don't want to let Gethin. No, no, no. But, right, Ted. Okay. That's Belf. You know that's. I, I you know Belf. You know Belf. You are both. You are the man the show, Grant. I know you've been getting excited as me. I love the show. But we are going to walk this way towards this with the view of my birthplace and yours. Radnorshire, then. Radnorshire. What's that for a view, then? God's country. Very positive, though, Ted. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, mate. And right, you I've go. loved it every minute of it. All the very best for the podcast. And one more time, God, Ted. Say it again. Take time and be nice. Thank you.